the book of St. John, chapter 4. You know, I'm an evangelist that's crossing America many, many times over. And I find this in a lot of areas, that there's a famine in the midst of the church. That you can be full of the Holy Ghost and starve it. Physically, spiritually, and financially. I know a lot of people that speak in tongues don't have a lick of power. I know a lot of them don't have a lick of sense. And Jesus said, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power. The word power there is dunamis or dunamos, which is the Greek word where we get our English word dynamite from. So Christian people ought to be dynamite. They ought to be exploding in the power of God. But I find that we talk too much about each other. And I'm tired of preachers writing books about each other too. And I'm tired of preachers saying, this is the ministry that will change the world. Baloney. What's going to touch the world is when all the local churches come together in the unity of the faith. That's right, brother. The world will be touched. Because God works through a local church. He does. Whether you like it or not, he just does. That's his plan. But I find that people can be going to a spirit-filled, punching, knock-down, drag-out church and be weak. Now, either they're not eating or there's nothing to eat. And I want to talk about that tonight. St. John chapter 4, we're reading out of the King James. We'll start reading at verse 14, verse 14. The famine in the midst of the church. Now we're going to kind of stay on this little verse here. We're going to kind of expository preach tonight. If you don't know what that means, look it up in the dictionary. It'll help you. St. John 4, verse 14, title of the sermon, The Famine in the Midst of the Church. Jesus is talking to a woman here that wants water. And he says in verse 14, but whosoever drinketh of this water, he didn't say whosoever sippeth. He said drinketh. Most people are just sipping. They're sipping saints instead of drinking saints. Now get away from booze. I'm not talking booze here. I'm talking about drinking out of the river of life. He didn't say he that sippeth. He said, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him, not what anybody else give him, that I shall give him, shall never thirst. How many of y'all believe that? Hold your hand up. How come we got so many thirsty Christians? If you believe what that just said, how many of y'all have a red lettered edition of the Bible? Hold your hand up. Is that in red? How many of y'all believe in the red parts? Huh? Good. Let's read that again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Now, I believe that. That's why I don't get thirsty. And people say, who do you think you are? Just wait. Your day is coming. Well, you're going to see. Well, I didn't sip it. I drank it. I used to be a heathen that drank booze. I didn't sip booze. I drank it a fifth a day. I, could, I would get up in the morning at 7 o'clock, eat eggs, and drink whiskey. I could fry my own eggs in my own mouth. I liked it. I didn't sip a drink, brother. I swallowed it. It's called on va, on va, on va, swallow. Jesus said, woman. Whosoever drinketh this water shall never thirst. I believe that. When Jesus came into my life, he gave me abundant life. I call it the abundant liver. When you have an abundant liver, you will never have cirrhosis of the giver. And a dollar bill seems so small at a grocery store, and it seems so big at church. I don't understand that. If it's small at the Winn-Dixie, it's small here. Remember that. So, Brother Jesse, what do you think of those dollar people, that, those dollar givers? They get buck fever. <laughs> if you're a hunter, you know what I'm talking about. Buck fever, it's all they can handle. Jesus said, whosoever drinketh of this water shall never thirst. Everybody say, never thirst. never thirst. That simply means, brother, if you drink from the life streams of God, you will have a hard time getting depressed. When everything's going wrong, when everything's blowing up, Jesus said, no weapon formed against you going to prosper. He did not say the weapon wouldn't be formed. He said, no weapon, that is formed. That means weapons will be formed against you. But the Bible said it wouldn't prosper. Maybe the reason why weapons have prospered is because people are sipping instead of drinking. Some people don't like, like our pastors just said, uh, some people don't want to get out of line. Though. We don't want to get too loose with this thing. It's kind of like trying to get baptized without getting wet. That's kind of hard to do. Let's read the scripture again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him, shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. 
I've heard many preachers say, you burned out. I said, from what? I said, how could you burn out? Yes, I got preacher burned out. I said, don't you know you got a well of living water inside of you? And out of your belly is flowing rivers of living water. In other words, brother, if you depressed and beat down, start drinking of the well that's springing up, blowing out of God's innermost being into your mouth. You can be, have a famine in the midst of plenty. Don't starve in the midst of plenty. Go to the table and eat what God says for you to have. You know why a lot of people burn out? Because they take the cares of their ministry and the cares of their life upon themselves. I don't do that. I cast them upon God. He said, cast all your care upon the Lord, for he careth for you. Now, I believe that, and I know that. So instead of getting depressed when the devil comes at me with everything he got, I just take a drink of water. I refresh myself. Now, I want to tell you something. You've got the great honor and privilege to be taught Sunday by your pastor. I've heard approximately five sermons in ten years because I'm preaching every Sunday. Now, how do I get fed? i got to eat myself. I drink from the spring of water. Just I don't even have to stoop over to get it. It's busting me in the face. You ever drink some water at a fountain and you turn it on, wham, and it just hits you? Get it all over you? Jesus said, whosoever drinketh. He didn't say whosoever sippeth. Now, many times I told, the devil's told me, I'm going to put you in a dry place. I'm going to make you thirsty. I said, I've drank the living water of God. And he says, I shall never. He didn't say I would not. He said, I shall not. That's what David said. He said, the Lord's my shepherd. Now, listen to this. I shall not. He didn't say I would not want. He said, well, God, I'll never get into the place of would not. I shall not want. He says, he's making me lie down. Most people tell you when you get saved, all right, all right, get ready to fight. It's amazing these old Christians today are just tearing up these young Christians. You ever notice when you first get saved, you seem like you're on cloud nine? Because you've drank instead of sipped. Boy, what I mean, every time the door is open, glory to God, and you want them, yeah, hallelujah. And everybody says, now calm down, honey, calm down. Get in the ditch with us. Come on down here with this ditch with me. This is the Christian ditch. Come on down here. You're going to get like us, blind leading the blind. Both of you following in the ditch. Wait, you're gonna be you're gonna you're gonna be high for three weeks, but get ready to get down. I want to get up. I'm tired of people just sipping the word of God. When I go to a buffet, I eat it. When you go to a buffet, you go. You don't say, "Give me one piece of sausage." You say, "Give me that bucket right there." <laughs> we went to a buffet today and we loaded up, didn't we? Loaded up. Wanted our money's worth plus. <laughs> well, Jesus says, "Eat all you can stand." He that drinketh, they didn't say he that sippeth, shall never thirst. Now you may understand my character. I'm not thirsty. <laughs> I've had people been telling me for 10 years, yeah, you're going to come down. You're going to get it. Wait. And they all got it then. See, I don't make a provision for failure. I don't buy medicine because it's on sale. Bring it to my medicine cabinet and wait. <laughs> it's coming. I just know I'm going to get it. And when you get it, you ask God to heal it. That don't make sense. You bought 400 tablets for it. Are you against medicine? No. I believe in going to doctors and taking medicine. But it's kind of dumb to buy it because it's on sale. Pepto-Bismol, 39 cents a quart. Let's get us a case. You're going to drink that stuff. He that drinketh. They didn't say he that simple. Shall never thirst. I've had preachers say, you got to get thirsty. You're supposed to get thirsty. I have it. You're going to get in trouble. I have it. Wait, you see, get in this ditch with us. No, no. Me, uh-uh. No, why? Because I quit. I didn't sip. They started sipping. I kept drinking. I am a spiritual alcoholic. <laughs> I'm wall of all Holy Ghost. I stay loaded all the time. <laughs> I'm high as a kite. Glory! You understand what I'm saying? I'm not sipping, boy. I'm drinking. <laughs> I'll tell the devil sometimes. i say, watch this devil just drink a whole bottle. <laughs> you ever know those people when they drink to get loose? When I take a good dose of the Holy Ghost, I love to get loose in public. And the devil knows that. <laughs> I nailed two Harry Christians at the Morrisant Airport one time. I've been drinking. I had been drinking. I was drinking from the well. Glory to God. I walked in there and they came up to me. I went, Glory! I started speaking in tongues. Freak them bald headed boys out. I had been drinking. I wasn't in the midst of famine, brother. I'd been drinking at the well. 
They looked at me and he said, we don't want to talk about that. We don't want to talk about that. So I started following them around. Just blessing them. Evidently, they was bothering everybody at the airport. And I, was, I was speaking in tongues saying, in the name of Jesus, there were people in the airport said, go get them, preacher. Get them over there. <laughs> well, Jesse, why do you do those things? I've been drinking. You get loose when you drink. <laughs> he said, he that simple. He said, he that drinker. This water. Oh, glory to God. It's full of life. You never thirst. And people get mad at you when you don't get thirsty. Come on, get that shape. No. That's so easy. I had a man tell me one time, I said, I was snared. I said, what's your problem? I committed adultery. I was snared. I said, you lying dog. You wasn't snared. You knew what you was doing. I couldn't help myself. I said, all you had to say was no. That's the only word you got to say. Somebody walk, walks up to you ladies or walk up to you men try to put a hit on you. Say, what's happening, mama? You say, no. It's over. <laughs> Finish. Some of you young people, you get in those cars, start fogging up them windows. Reason why your mom and dad are laughing because they fogged them up too. They may not tell you that, but they did. Said, I couldn't help myself. All you got to say is no. That's it. It's over. No. It's finished. So easy. First word you learned when you was a baby. Want some of this spinach? No. <laughs> no. He that drink of. Talking about the famine in the midst of the church. It's funny tonight, but think how many people that are going to church every Sunday and dying spiritually. Because they're sipping. Barely enough to keep them alive. He that drinketh shall never thirst. Let's read it again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him. Glory to God. You don't even have to pray for it. It's in you. <laughs> A well of water springing up. Notice this. Into everlasting life. Now I'm going to say something going to really shock you. I, I would have a hard time dying. You don't believe that. Because you don't believe the book. The Bible said death and life is in the power of your tongue. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching. Where is it at? Where is it at, Brother Jesse? Go find it. Go study. Most people, the only time they study is one of them bread boxes. Trying to get their little scripture for the morning. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. <laughs> study. Ooh, I don't want that one. <laughs> That's the only scripture they get. You understand what I'm saying? Famine in the midst of the church. Heed that drinker. My point is this. Listen to it. Whatever keeps me. Now, I know this without a fact. Listen to it. Whatever keeps me from my Bible or the Word of God is my enemy. You hear what I'm saying? Whatever keeps me from my Bible or the Word of the living God is my enemy. That includes the television. If it keeps me from the Word, from studying, from taking a daily... Jesus said, give us this day our daily bread. He didn't say our Sunday bread. Now, what did he say that? He said, I am the bread of life. You've got to take a daily dose of Jesus. Listen to my point. Whatever keeps me from my Bible or the word of God is my enemy. Inside my soul. Now, what's the soul of man? The mind, the will, and the emotion of man. There's a spirit, there's a soul, and there's a body. There's not a body or a soul or a spirit. There's a spirit, the real you is on the inside. There's a soul, which is your mind, your will, your emotion. The reason why God loves the soul, because in the mind, the will, and the emotion is where the decision is made to recreate the spirit. You got that? Inside my soul is my will. It is my automatic pilot that keeps me on course. You know why Christians have so much problems? I got a sermon on that. Be not conformed to this world. They've conformed to the world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your soul. That's what it means in the original Greek. The renewing of your mind. The renewing of your will. The renewing of your emotion. Have you ever seen some spirit-filled people that are emotionally retarded? They don't know what to do. Because their mind has been conformed to the world. Conformed to theology. Conformed the way grandma done it. She could have been wrong. He said, be not conformed, but be ye transformed. Transformed. Born again. Turned around. Recreated. Your will is your soul. It's your automatic pilot that keeps you on course. I keep myself on course in the word of God by transforming my mind, my will, and my emotion. It keeps me on course. Now, let me tell you something. It took me 24 and a half years to say, Jesus, come into my life. That was dumb, wasn't it? But I could have got saved at five. You people are not saved tonight. You can get saved tonight. It's your will. You're off course. Because you was created to serve God. People say, I just can't help myself. Your automatic pilot's broke. 
Not your will, but his be done. This is what I'm saying here. Whatever keeps me from my Bible or the word of God is my enemy. Inside my soul or my mind is my will. It is my automatic pilot that keeps me on course. I was flying not long ago, and the pilot, the captain of the jet, we were flying at 37,000 feet, 585 miles an hour on an L-1011, and the pilot, the captain, came out and looked at me and said, How you doing? I said, What are you doing here? He said, I come to say hello to you people. I said, who's, who's flying this plane? He said, it's on automatic pilot. I said, has it ever made a mistake? <laughs> he said, not when I'm on it. Have a good flight. He was confident in those instruments that could have failed. You can trust God better than an airplane, and God cannot fail, and most people won't ever put God in the seat because they've been conformed to the world instead of transformed. When things get tight, they hold their money. They quit giving to God. Quit charging. Quit giving the MasterCard and Visa at 18% interest. Pay your bills off. Give to God. Don't eat your seed. This is my last dollar. I ain't giving my last dollar. Don't eat your seed. Because the dollar ain't going to buy much. Plan it. You'll get it back 30, 60, and 100 fold. That ain't bad. New York Stock Exchange wouldn't mind having that. So whatever keeps me from my Bible, when the devil tries to take my time, keep me from the Word of God, I automatically put my soul on my automatic pilot. It's on course. Or when my mind or when my body wants to do something, I start looking around. Hey, let's go do this. My, oh, I go to and I can't. Why? Because I'm on an automatic course to eat the Word of God daily. So I shall never thirst. You see? I refuse to have famine in my life when there's plenty all around me. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? I want you to turn with me to James chapter 5 quickly. I'm going to kind of teach and preach tonight. Now listen to this. Your soul is your automatic pilot. It should keep you on course. The prodigal son, he didn't have to get in the hog pen alive. He didn't have to eat the hog slop alive. He had a daddy that was loaded to the gills. His father was going out every day looking for that boy. Not to beat him, but to put a ring on his finger and a, and a cloak or a robe on his body. To wash his feet and give him new shoes. To give him an inheritance, another inheritance, because he got the first one. Now, his will changed in the hog pen of life. He didn't have to eat any of that. Notice he went to his friend's house, and a friend put him in a hog shop. You ever had friends come over and never leave? You ever had people come over and eat everything you got? It's amazing about young girls, 14 and 15 years old. They get around boys. They can't eat nothing. Half a slice of pizza. <coughs> Too much. Have a slumber party in your house with five of them. They'll eat you out of a house and home. But when them boys come around, <coughs> my daughter told me that the other day. She said, Dad, are you? she leaned over. We was going to eat somewhere. She said, are you buying? I said, yeah. She told her friend Connie. She said, eat anything you want. He's the El Shabbat. <laughs> He's the dad that's more than enough. She said, I like it when you buy it, Daddy, because I know I can eat anything I want. She said, I'll get away from them hot dogs and go to steak. <laughs> and when she goes out on a date, <laughs> hot dogs. One slice of pizza when she comes to daddy, filet mignon covered with shrimp sauce. 22 bucks. Amaretta cheesecake. And she don't think twice. She just looked at me and said, daddy, produce. <laughs> she don't care. She don't sip a, she drink a. Let me show you what God has done. He's literally opened up his wallet for his family. If you ladies here, if your husband would open up his wallet and say, honey, take anything you want, would you go, oh, I'm not worthy? <laughs> Do you have a coin purse? <laughs> I take a quarter. <laughs> you will reach down and then rip out the leather with the money. Come on. I got a friend of mine, he's a bank president in <laughs> home of Louisiana. His wife loved to spend money, brother. She's a good friend of both of them, a good friend. She can charge, but I really, she said, he said she can take a charge card and throw it, and it'll land in them little machines at 100 yards. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> he was making a joke about the other day. He said the other day she was sleeping. He said, I leaned over and put my hand on her head and be began to command the devil to come out of her. I said, come out, devil. And he said, decent MasterCard, American Express, <laughs> begin to come out of her mouth. <laughs> I'll never forget, I like a fellow Floyd, though. 
See, she wasn't sipping. She's drinking. <laughs> he that drinketh. See, her mind, her soul is on an automatic pilot to them stores. I saw the other day. What's the name of my Esplanade? First time she'd been there, she went, Whoo, love, look at this place. And, there's a, and her husband's brunny going, control yourself, Marilyn. Now, come on, control yourself. Woo! That girl had a Holy Ghost fit in Macy's. She was ready. That's true. See, such a blessing. <laughs> James chapter 5, the Bible says this. The effectual fervent, James 5 verse 16, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. You know what the word righteous means? Right standing, no inferiority, no fear, no condemnation. The effectual or the effective prayer. Do you pray ineffective prayers? Do you pray prayers like you're shooting dice? Okay, God, come on, give me a seven, God. Oh, snake eyes. No, God, no, no, no. Come on. Do you pray prayers to see where the words may splatter? Or do you pray effectual, fervent prayers? The Bible says this, of a righteous man availeth much. You can't pray an effectual, fervent prayer unless you are studying and decreeing and declaring and manifesting what the Word of God has for you. So remember this, anything that keeps you from the Word. When I'm going to miss church tonight, you're going to put your spiritual man on fast. You're going to put your spiritual man on fast. But I'm going to see, but I, I, you know, I, I'm going to listen to a tape. A tape is an hors d'oeuvre. That's an hors d'oeuvre. Look at me. When you see a man like me come in, me, I'm dessert. I am. And I've seen people say, I'm going to go to Old Roberts. I'm going to go to Kenneth Hagin. I'm going to go to Swaggart. I'm going to go to Jesse. You're going to miss some vital nutrients for you to grow. You're going to become malnourished in the word of God. Why? Because you must submit yourself to a local pastor. Because he's going to give you roast beef, butter, beans, and cornbread, rice, dressing, and dessert. People, if you only ate once a week, one meal a week, and you wouldn't eat nothing else till the next week, you would physically die of malnutrition. Do you know that? You would only eat one meal a week. One. That's it. Drink nothing else but water. Only eat that one meal a week. That's it. If it was on a Sunday morning, eat it. If you wouldn't eat nothing till the next Sunday, your body, you would lose it. You would die of malnutrition. Why are you trying to stay spiritually strong on one Sunday morning meal a week? Huh? Famine in the midst of the church. And there's abundant supply. But you're in a famine. Because you're sipping instead of drinking. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That's why Jesus said, Say unto this mountain, be thou removed. Doubt not in your heart, but believe those things you say shall come to pass. You shall have. He didn't say you would not. He didn't say you could not. He said you shall have it. Whatsoever you say us. Now you see preachers, they think Mark 11, 23 and 24 wasn't wrote by God. Yeah, it was there. It wrote by him. Yeah, it was wrote by him. <laughs> it's in the book. It's there. And if it's wrote for Jesus, it was wrote for you. You have to understand that. Now listen to my point. Our prayers are only as powerful as our lives. You can't pray effectively what you have at birth or live. You understand what I'm saying? Listen to my point. Our prayers are only as effective as our lives. The effectual prayer of a righteous man availeth much. This is the point. Our prayers are only as powerful as our lives. You can't pray effectively what you have at birth or live. You got to quit praying Logos and start praying Rhema. You can believe Logos all your life and never manifest in the Rhema. And you'll say, well, you know, when God gets ready to heal. See, that runs me up a tree when people say that. When God gets ready to heal. That's Logos talking. Jesus said, by your spite, my stripes you are. But the reason why you hadn't got it in your body to a physical manifestation because it's Logos. Your automatic pilot is not on course. You've got to get it to Rhema to get that cancer out of your body. How do you think people, God instantly heals? Logos becomes rhema. If you don't understand those two terminologies, that's the Greek terminology for the word of God. One's written, one's spoken. It's got to become rhema. It, you can't pray, you can't effectively produce God's word unless you birth this. You understand what I'm saying? i never forget 1971 on October 25th. They rolled that little pretty lady right there into a delivery room. That doctor looked at me. I'll never forget I had the craziest doctor to deliver Jody, my daughter. When she was born up in Dallas, Texas, actually in Arlington, Texas. And his name was Garth Hatch. Is that a name for you? But he was on a waiting list. People were trying to get to that doctor. Now I understand why. Because he was such a good one. He come in, he said, blood. And he said, your wife's going to be here all night. She's a little woman. And this is your first baby. And uh, you want to play some cards? 
And I forget that long as I live. I said, play cards. He said, yeah, yeah, you want to play blackjack? I said, yeah, I'll play blackjack. And Kathy was in the room going, wow. He said, don't worry about it. We're going to give her some drugs. Her body's going to feel the pain, but her mind won't know where she's at. Mind will be gone, man. He said, she'll be walking. Don't worry about it. Hit me. We start playing blackjack. Now, I wasn't saying them days. I was winning, people. Finally, the old nurse came in. She said, doctor, Mrs. DePlanis is ready. He said, hold that deck of cards. Don't move. Boy, if I could have won some more, could have got my money back for all the money I paid that man. I was winning. I knew how to play blackjack. He didn't. The odds was against him. But I would mess up a lot of times. I could have won a lot. I could have had a bunch. But I'd hear Kathy go, Whoa! I said, she all right. Don't worry about it. What you got? What you got? What you got? Crazy doctor, but good. Finally, the nurse came in. She said, come on. He said, don't move them two hands. Hang on a second. Took off, man. <laughs> Ran it in. They put a green mask on it. Went in there and you heard Kathy, Whoa! And I heard this voice, push, push, push. I almost said it myself. Push! <laughs> Whatever that means, because in those days, a husband could go in and watch his baby being born. Jody was born in 1971. At 12.06, man, we were supposed to be there all night. She was in at what, 8.30, 8 o'clock, something like that. I don't know, when she went into labor. 12.06, Jody's born. The doc comes wheeling out, see? Shows me my baby. Six seconds after it's born. Don't look too good. Not cleaned up. He said, what do you think? I said, can we put this back? What is this? He said, you got a new little baby girl. She's all right. Your wife's fine. Everything's fine. Punch me an arm. You did a good job. Now, come on back. What you got? I said, I can't think. He said, well, then let me win. Let me win. But Jody wasn't born until Kathy pushed. She hollered for hours. Now, they got this Lamaze method thing. That simply means no drugs be administered to the female's body. But the male man can have as much as he wants him. The husband can say, yeah, give me some of that. Go ahead, honey, push. It's amazing, isn't it? But Jody wasn't birthed until Kathy pushed. I want to tell you something, brother. On a, on a Saturday night in September of 1974, Jesus Christ was pregnant. Jesus was in travail for Jesse the planets. I want to tell you something, brother. Jesus was in travail. I mean, in hard pains were upon Jesus. And God the Father looked at him and said, Jesus, push, push, push. And Jesus pushed. And out came Jesse the planets, born into the kingdom of God, a new baby in the Lord Jesus Christ, brother. There was no famine. I was birthed into the kingdom of God. Well, I'm blessed. God the Father was telling his son, come on, push. Push him out. He's mine. And I was born into the kingdom of God. Pretty. That might shock some of you, that illustration. But you understand what I'm talking about. Birth is always in travail. Thanks for listening to this powerful message by Jesse Duplantis. Remember to hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell in order to be up to date with all things Jesse Duplantis Ministries. For more information, visit our website at jdm.org. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.